Hello everyone, happy Mars Day. I'm Amanda, your astrologer, and today I'm gonna talk about the sun. So we're gonna talk about what the sun in astrology really means. It's the most basic part of astrology. Sun sign astrology is what you find in the horoscopes and newspapers. That's the most well-known form of astrology. And basically, I have another video on the sun that I made a couple of years ago. If you want to watch that, I have bangs. But uh, that's a pretty good video. I rewatched it. Um, this is going to be more conversational. I don't know. In the other video, I was feeling more poetic. But um, so the sun is what we use when we talk about our birthday. Like when you say, when were you born? What sign are you? You're talking about your sun sign. That means which zodiac sign the sun was transiting on the day you were born. And as we all know, it takes the sun 30 days to move through a zodiac sign. It moves through a sign at the pace of one degree per day. Um, so those are basics on the astrology of the sun. What does it represent? So when you say like, hi, I'm Amanda, I'm a sun in Capricorn, what does that mean? Okay, you could say, my, okay, I'm just gonna insert really quick my biggest pet peeve about astrologers, something that I do as well. When they just are like, oh yeah, I'm just like, I'm just a Capricorn. Like, what does that mean? You know what I'm saying? You can't just, you can't just say that because people don't know what that means. Okay, so we're going to talk about what that means. I have some notes here. This is not a full thing on the sun, um, but this is like the basic, basic, basic. So in Hellenistic astrology, which is the ancient uh, astrology, um, Hellenistic astrologers of yore, they said that the sun emits and the sun selects. Those are the basic functions of the sun and what it does, okay? But when we talk about what it represents, that includes your awareness. So what you are mainly aware of in your life, okay? So I'm a sun in Capricorn, that means I am mostly aware of things that are from a Capricorn point of view, right? So the sun is your point of view as well. Not a lot of people use that phrase when they talk about what the sun represents. And I feel like it's really good. So it's your point of view, right? It's um, your identity, your essence. It's the energy that you give off. It's your vitality, how much energy you have to spend on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, the way that you express yourself. So I may express myself more as a Capricorn person, but, you know, Mercury also represents the way you express yourself. So the way that I speak and the thoughts that I have are more of my Mercury sign, which is Sagittarius. And the way that I come across, I guess, is more Capricorn. So when I was growing up, a lot of times I would hear like, oh, I was kind of like scared to talk to you. You looked like intimidating or whatever. That's a very classic sun in Capricorn or any like sun in Scorpio type energy because it's, we're ruled by a malefic planet in that sense. So my, so Capricorn and Scorpio, for example, they're both ruled by malefic planets, Mars or Saturn. And so that's the way I come across, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then they talk to me and I'm really nice and that's my moon in Libra. So, um, all right. So it's your radiance, you know, the energy you're, you're, you're vibing, you're giving off to people, your inner light, um, your focus in life. So along with your awareness, what you're aware of, it's also like what you're focused on mainly um, you know, your point of view, right? Your consciousness, the things you're consciously aware of on a day-to-day -day basis and how you show up in the world. So don't get that confused with the way that the public views you. 
Um, they can be, I guess, tied together, but if I have a sun in Capricorn, but I have a, a 10th house in Taurus, um, the way that I show up is going to be a combination of those things, okay? But when we talk about the sun, yeah, it's just the energy, the main energy that you give off, um, your point of view in life. So... Even though I'm a Leo rising, I said this in my other video, even though I'm a Leo rising, you know, I'm very like dramatic, performative. Those are just basic stereotypical words for Leo rising. Uh, I'm, I'm a performer. That is true. Um, but I, but I move through it in the style of Capricorn. So I may have a more like negative mindset sometimes, um, struggle with depression, all the things, you know, um, yeah, it's like, I, I'm a performer, you know, I'm a stage performer growing up and everything, but in my personality, you know, in a personal level, the Capricorn, like more depressed, depressed energy, um, comes out and, I hate to just overuse the word depression because it's not really about like clinical diagnosis. Okay. I'm not diagnosing anyone here, but, um, even though I am diagnosed, but, uh, <laughs> it's not about that. It's about when we talk about the sun. Okay. And the sun is in Leo. Okay. It's think about it. Midsummer. You're in the Northern hemisphere. Midsummer. It's the middle of Leo season. The sun is at 15 degrees of Leo. That's the hottest time of the year okay that's when there's the most light okay and then you go opposite to that season and the sun is in Aquarius or Capricorn during winter the sun has less light the sun is not as hot and not consistently like we have less consistency of hot days those are all sun things the sun shows up Every single day, consistently, you can rely on the sun. And not only that, the sun runs everything. Because without the sun, you can't do anything. There's no light. There's no energy. There's no heat. We're all dead. Okay? So, you know, the sun is the leader. If we're talking about archetypes, it's the leader. It's the center of attention. It's the showman. You know, it, it, uh, the showman in the sense of, like, it gets everyone around it hyped up. Um, it leads everybody. Uh, if it's like the circus, it's the ringleader. It's people that are just very important. VIPs, okay? Um, one who raises the energy around them, right? The sun gives energy freely. Um, it can often be thought of as the father, the master, the honorable one, right? Kingship and just well-known people. So if you have a really strong sun in your chart, um, you're probably one of those archetypes. Um, just you run shit, okay? If you have a lot of Leo energy in your chart, someone like, um, you guys know Chelsea Lynn, a.k.a. Trailer Trash Tammy? Her chart, she has a lot of Leo in her chart, and if you learn anything about her and her life, she runs it. She is the center of everything she she employs so many people doing her thing you know um so generous it's just amazing like i think that's a really good uh example of a leo a big you know energy of leo person uh she also has that look like the cat eye face like just looks like a cat like a beautiful like you know, Nala energy to the face, uplifted, like, you know, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just like, you know, the eyes are like that. Um, very feline, right, look. Um, but yeah, the, the, the sign of Leo is ruled by the sun. That's why I keep mentioning the sun um, and Leo. But um, as far as body parts, right, the sun can represent your head, right, all your sensory organs, any part of you that takes in light, uh, you know, uh, that takes in vitamin D, that can perceive light, right? Your eyeballs, all that stuff. Uh, it's specifically your right eye 
in astrology, your left eye would be the moon. Um, your torso, right, is where your heart is. So the sun is often, you know, the heart in uh, what it represents. Your life breath, your sensory movement, your nerves. Um, so anything controlling your senses, your sensory input. Um, and yes, this is closely linked with like mercurial significations because more mercury energy is also your, your nervous system. Um, but it's more, instead of like the input of your nervous system, it's like the uh, information that comes from that sensory input. So the information you get from your senses is mercury. Um, okay. And so uh, substances, uh, the sun can represent gold, right? Very simple, gold, crops. Wheat and barley, the color lemon yellow, and bitter taste. Um, my notes, by the way, they're from the astrology podcast with Demetra George on the sun. Um, so you can go watch that. It's, I don't know, three hours long. So they deep dive into it really well. Um, yeah, so of course the sun is light and warmth, which generates life. It's the thing responsible for life even existing. Um, and that's why it is like, you know, dueled with the moon, which also gives life, but in a more motherly form of physical form. Um, but the sun gives life as far as just like with like without it, we're dead, right? Uh, we need light. We need warmth, heat to be alive. Um, so it's the all giving principle of light and sharing the sun, like I said, gives freely, um, and a lot of people rely on the sun to be there. Um, in in other type of um, significations, it can represent justice, right? Because it's about truth. It's about um, keeping oaths, right? The sun will show up every day, like the sun and humans and all living things have a contract with each other like hey son you're going to show up every day and we're going to live right and the sun says yes and then we live um it can also represent things of divination um it's it's all seeing right the sun rejoices in the ninth so the ninth house represents just wide knowledge um higher knowledge um perception, illumination, so things becoming enlightened, you know, when you have an idea and the light bulb goes off, the light bulb in your mind, it's uncovering information, um, uncovering what is concealed, right? You shine a light on something and like it was hidden and now it's not. So um, yeah, it's just a, the anchor point of everything. Um, and the sun is that anchor point around which all else revolves. Okay, so that's why we get a lot of uh, sun people or Leo people that are, um, they think they're, you can have like negative associations with Leo energy, right? You have someone who like deserves all the respect that they get because they give so much that it's just like we revere this person, like of course we're gonna honor this person they give us so much and, and, you know, that's a good reflection, but the negative reflection is like the, a person that thinks that they negative Leo energy, negative sun energy, a person that thinks that they deserve all the honor and reverence and they don't really deserve it and they don't give, they take instead, you know, those are people that have a lot of Leo placements, especially at the late degrees of Leo, um, that honestly, they get a bad reputation for being greedy, um, self-centered, self-absorbed, just like the worst. <laughs> okay. So, um, so yeah, if you have, um, it's hard, it's, it's subjective number one and hard to tell what negative energy is in anything. So just take everything generally, if you are curious, like you're like, oh, I have a lot of Leo energy and I genuinely want to know if I'm like expressing it good or not, like you can talk to an astrologer, but 
just ask yourself, are you giving more than you take? The sun gives freely. It doesn't charge you for sunlight, okay? It gives every day without fail, happily. You know what I mean? So if you embody that energy, I think that's good Leo energy, good sun energy. Um, earning your honor, like really, truly. Um, and that comes with just like being truthful, taking all the information around you and being honorable about it and um, just being a good leader, right? So that's all the notes that I took from the sun. Um, as I said in the last sun video, I would love to do a sun in each sign video for you guys. Um, we'll do that after the planetary series, I feel. Um, next video, I'm going to talk about Mercury a little bit more. So, so yeah, um, I hope that this was informative. Let me know if you learned something. Leave it in the comments and leave your insights. That's a good sun word. Leave your insights about the sun in the comments if I left anything out. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye.